friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome if you're new here. My name is Jen, I'm a certified weight loss and nutrition coach and I'm on the WW or the Weight Watchers Blue Plan. It's Monday, it's another meal prep. But this is an exciting meal prep because my oven is working, thank goodness. So I was able to use my oven for all three meal prep recipes, which is super, super exciting. I have a delicious decadent indulgent breakfast, an amazing low point veggie packed lunch, and cookies that are two points. You heard me right, two smart point full size cookies. So if you're excited for today's video, please give it a big huge thumbs up. And if you're not yet subscribed or you're new, I'd absolutely love to have you join my community. All you have to do is hit the little subscribe button and the bell next to it and you'll be notified whenever I upload. I do upload videos five to six days a week so you definitely don't wanna miss out. And Monday is always meal prep day. Don't forget to check out the description box down below for my 2021 custom calendar. You can track everything from your food, activity, self-care, and even your water. It's not too late to pick one up. I'm almost out. So if you're interested, make sure you get your hands on one relatively quickly before they are sold out for the year. You can find that information down in the description box, along with my nutrition coaching website, where I configure your macros and calories personalized to you. It is so important to know exactly how much you should be eating to lose weight. So let me do all of that work and personalize it for you, your lifestyle, your activity. It's all about you in those macros and those calories. If you're looking for a little bit more one-on-one -on -one support, I do offer 30 and 60 minute coaching sessions as well. Links and discount codes to the items I shared with you today, as well as all of my other favorite things are down in the description box, along with my Facebook group, another community that would love to have you. So let's jump into to these three amazing recipes for the week. breakfast this morning I'm making blueberry french toast casserole with cream cheese. Now that my oven is fixed I finally can bake and I'm so incredibly excited. It is early in the morning it's about 6 30. We need to get this ready to go so it can sit in the fridge for a few hours while we do the rest of our meal prep. It should technically sit overnight so I'm just going to let it sit the majority of the morning while I make my lunch and my dessert. So here is what is in breakfast. First you're going to need some brown sugar alternative. I'm just using the Lakanto monk fruit. This one's actually my very favorite one. You can pick up this on Lakanto's website. There's a link down below with 20% off. You're going to need eggs, almond milk or low fat milk, whatever your preference is, all purpose flour, light butter, salt, lots and lots of fresh blueberries, about two cups. If you're going to use frozen, make sure that you really soak up any extra liquid. Frozen fruit adds more liquid to your recipe and we don't want this. So fresh is better, but if you only have frozen, thaw them and soak up any extra liquid. You're also going to need a loaf of sourdough bread between eight and 10 ounces, vanilla extract and cinnamon. The original recipe also calls for nutmeg, which I don't have. So I'm just going to use a little extra cinnamon some maple syrup, and last but not least, one third less fat cream cheese. So let's make some French toast casserole. The first thing I'm going to do is put my eight ounces of cream cheese here in a bowl, and then I'm going to add my one third cup of the brown sugar, and we are just going to stir this together until it is fully combined, and then we'll go ahead and chop up that loaf of sourdough bread into cubes so we can start layering this in a nine by 13 greased baking dish. Over the top of the bread cubes, we're just going to put the cream cheese brown sugar mixture just in little dollops. No rhyme or reason to it. Just make sure that you try to get some dollops over every part of the bread until your cream cheese is completely gone. Once your cream cheese is on your bread cubes, we're going to sprinkle one cup or half of the blueberries right over the top of the bread and the cream cheese mixture. 
I'm going to add the other cup because I just realized, this is real life you guys, that the original recipe said to put half the bread in the bottom and then the blueberries on top of the cream cheese, then the other half. I am just going to go ahead and add all my blueberries. I don't think it's going to make much difference at all, but if you wanna follow the original recipe, that is what will be linked on my website. So let me add the rest of these blueberries. Now we're going to prepare the egg mixture. I'm going to crack eight eggs into my bowl. Go ahead and give those a quick whisk just to break up that yolk and combine the eggs a little bit. Now we're going to add two cups of almond milk or whatever milk that you're using, our one quarter cup of maple syrup. Do not omit the maple syrup from this recipe. If you wanna lower the points, feel free to use sugar-free, but this is the only sweetener in the recipe, so don't omit it altogether. We're also going to add our cinnamon, and this is also where you would add your nutmeg. I'm just going to put in about a tablespoon, tablespoon and a half of cinnamon, one teaspoon of vanilla, extract and a pinch of salt and then go ahead and whisk that together until fully combined. We're going to take the bread blueberry cream cheese mixture and we're going to pour on the egg mixture. You want to make sure you get every single slice of bread covered with the egg mixture. I'm going to cover this and throw it in the refrigerator and I'm going to let this soak as long as it takes for me to make the other two recipes for meal prep and then I will get this into the oven once it has a few hours to soak. Again, ideally, you would wanna soak this overnight or at least four to six hours. Five hours later. Before we put the French toast casserole in the oven, I have one third of a cup of all-purpose flour. I'm going to add one third cup of the Swerve brown sugar substitute and four tablespoons of light butter and about a teaspoon of cinnamon. This is the crumble topping to go on top of our French toast. So this is not only cream cheese French toast, it has a streusel topping. So I'm going to mix this all together really well to create that streusel. We'll pop it on top of our French toast and get this in the oven at 350 degrees. Look at how amazing this looks. I cannot wait to have this for breakfast this next week. I told my husband I was making it and he loves cream cheese anything. So this actually makes 12 servings. So it's perfect for both him and I for the week. It is eight smart points on the blue and purple plan, nine points on the green plan, 219 calories per serving, which is not bad at all. I'm planning on just pairing this with some eggs for zero points. So it's an eight smart point breakfast, which is not bad at all. Now, if you want to cut these into bigger servings, then you can cut this into eight pieces and it would be 329 calories. I'm not sure about the points. You'd have to enter that into your recipe builder, but 329 calories for a big slice of cream cheese indulgent French toast casserole is a huge win. I'm looking forward to having this all week. So this will be my eight smart point breakfast. For this week's lunch, I'm making a cheesy chicken cauliflower rice casserole. Again, I'm so excited to cook this in my oven. It's so weird that you miss it so much when you don't have it, but I'm excited for this. This is a recipe that I will eat. My husband will not. He is not a fan of cauliflower rice, and no matter how I disguise it, he knows it's there. So I'm gonna have this for myself. It's very low point. It's very low calorie, tons of vegetables. So if you're looking to up your veggie game, this is a great recipe for that. So in this recipe, you'll need quite a bit of rice cauliflower. I have two 10 ounce bags, six ounces of one third less fat cream cheese, chicken breast, I'm using 14 ounces, so just shy of a pound. This is actually from my Imperfect Foods. You can see that there. They aren't just produce, you guys. They have meat and snacks, spices, you name it, they have it. I got Imperfect Foods, I'll have it linked down below with $10 worth of free groceries, no minimum order. So you go shop around, get some free food. So I'll be using the chicken from there. Lots and lots of spices, onion powder, garlic powder, paprika, 
chili powder, oregano, and Italian seasoning. I am out of milk, and it's funny, my husband works at a dairy. Well, he delivers milk for the dairy, but we're out of milk because he's been off for the last few days. So I'm gonna use this half and half. I'm just going to mix it with a little bit of water to keep the points low, just like I was using low-fat milk. There's hardly any left, actually, in this little container anyway. Light shredded cheese, minced garlic, and last but not least, some salt and pepper. Let's make some lunch. First thing we need to do is cook up our chicken. So I went ahead and sliced it into thinner, smaller pieces. I just have it in a pan here with some nonstick cooking spray. I'll pop in a little salt and pepper and we'll get this cooked all the way through because the recipe actually uses it as shredded. Chicken is shredded, so let's start putting our casserole together. We're going to add both bags of the cauliflower to a large bowl. Mine is still a little bit frozen, although it's been sitting out for about a half of an hour or so. And then here is the chicken that I shredded once it finished cooking. And we're going to add all of the chicken and give it a quick stir. Now we're going to add our seasonings, starting with the smoked or sweet paprika. We want about a teaspoon. If you follow my channel, you know I don't measure my spices. And I usually over season because we really like our food super, super seasoned. And then we want about a teaspoon of garlic powder, a teaspoon of onion powder, a teaspoon of Italian seasoning, half of a teaspoon of dried oregano, and half of a teaspoon of chili powder. Now add more if you prefer your food a little more spicy, which I do not. I do not like my food very spicy. And then we are going to give this a stir. We wanna make sure those ingredients we wanna make sure the spices get mixed really well with the cauliflower and the chicken. Now we're going to be adding in one half of a cup of milk. Again, I mixed the half and half with just some water to make it a little bit lighter. Six ounces of softened cream cheese. This has been sitting out for about a half an hour as well, the same as the cauliflower rice. I'm going to add a huge scoop of minced garlic. And then I measured out one cup of the light shredded cheese. I'm going to add about half of that to the mix. Go ahead and mix that up really well. You wanna make sure that cream cheese gets mixed thoroughly with the cauliflower. Once that is mixed up, look how delicious that looks. We are going to spray about a three quart casserole dish. This is a six by nine. So I'm going to spray it really well with nonstick cooking spray. And then I'm gonna transfer this whole mixture into the baking dish and pat it down. We, I have my oven preheating to 400 degrees and we'll cover this with some foil and pop it into the oven for about 30 minutes. I just pulled out the casserole. It's been in for about a half of an hour. So now I'm going to add that other half of a cup of light cheese to the top and I'm going to put it back in the oven uncovered for about 10 minutes or so just until the cheese melts and it's nice and bubbly. But this actually smells incredible and I'm interested to know if that cauliflower really shines through or if by using all those spices, cheese and cream cheese helps kind of cover up the flavor of the cauliflower. Cheesy cauliflower bake is out of the oven. This looks so good. This actually looks better than I thought that it would. So this is what I'm going to be having for lunches for the week. I'm going to let it cool in the baking dish and then I'm just going to leave it in here and cut from it each day. This entire baking dish makes six servings. So that's a good size amount. We've got chicken, veggies, cheese, so some healthy fats. It is five points on both blue and purple and seven points on the green plan because you do have to count for your chicken, it's 235 calories per serving. This would be amazing with some avocado on top. So I am really excited for this. I may throw on some avocado. I'll probably pair it with fruit. So this is lunch, cheesy chicken, cauliflower rice casserole. I will put green what my husband thought. I'm going to have him try this and see if he notices that it's cauliflower. For dessert, I'm finally able to make those two Smart Point soft ginger cookies, and I'm so excited for these. I told Troy he wants these in his lunch, so I am pretty darn excited to finally have a good, delicious cookie. So for the cookies, you're actually going to need self-rising flour. If you cannot find self-rising flour, you can make your own by adding in, I believe it's baking soda, but you can Google that. I just try to buy self-rising flour. It just makes it a little bit easier. You'll also need some molasses. The recipe calls for cinnamon, cloves, and ginger. So what I'm doing in place of that is just using the Dax Pumpkin Pie Spice. This seasoning is 
killer. It is the best seasoning ever. It's the best pumpkin spice ever. It has honey in there, but it's still zero calories, zero points. It is all natural, no salt, no MSG, clean, clean ingredients. And this will take the place of all three of those spices. So if you don't want to spend a lot of money to buy all those spices you very rarely use, just go ahead and pick this up off of Dax. And while you're there, grab all the other spices they have because they have some amazing, amazing, no salt, no MSG spices. So I'll link Dax down below with 10% off for you guys. You can pick up the pumpkin spice year round. I'm out of my Lakanto brown sugar. So I have this swerve. This is not my favorite, but I have it. So I'm going to use it. One egg, light butter. And then this is the Lakanto monk fruit sweetener just in my little fancy jar. So let's get started on our cookies. So to start on our cookies, I have two and a quarter cups of self rising flour, and then I'm going to add in my pumpkin pie spice. And again, remember this is taking the place of all of the spices I was putting in these cookies. So I'm going to use what's left in my container, which is about I would say maybe two teaspoons and stir that together until everything is combined. I did decide to add some ginger. There is no ginger in the pumpkin pie spice and the recipe wants two teaspoons of ginger to make ginger cookies. So I'm glad that I read that through because you guys know me, I don't always read the directions thoroughly and sometimes I miss something, but I am going to go ahead and pop the ginger in because we're making ginger cookies, so we definitely want to be able to taste the ginger. In a smaller bowl, we are going to put our sugar substitutes. So I have one quarter cup of Swerve brown sugar and one half of a cup of the Lakanto monk fruit. I will link Lakanto down in the description box with a discount for 20% off on their website. They carry all the different sugar alternatives, brown, powdered, and granular. So I usually buy it off of there, but I ran out, so I ended up having to pick up Swerve in a Walmart grocery haul that you guys saw a couple of weeks ago. It's just honestly not my favorite. It has a little bit of that cooling aftertaste and I do not love that. But I'm going to mix that in really well with the Lakanto. I'm then going to add in six tablespoons of softened light butter, one quarter cup of molasses and one egg. And then you can either pull out your hand mixer or just beat these together really, really well until everything is combined fully. Now we're going to add the wet mixture slowly into our dry mixture and stir it until it is fully incorporated. We just wanna do little by little, but you also don't wanna over stir. So just stir until it starts to get incorporated, add a little bit more and continue until your dough is made. I went ahead and pulled out my baking sheet, sprayed it with some nonstick cooking spray, and my goal is 20 for cookies, so I am using the smallest cookie scoop that I have. I did buy this three pack of cookie scoops off of Amazon. I'll link it down below for you guys, just so you know, they haven't been available for a while. I don't know, you know how things come and go from Amazon. These just haven't been available, but I'll still link them down below in the event that they're back in stock, or maybe you can even get them from another seller on Amazon. So I'm going to scoop 24 cookies, and my oven is currently preheating to 350 degrees. So let's see how good I do getting 24 cookies. All right, there's our cookies. I got 24 total. I went ahead and just squished them down a little bit. Using the self-rising flour, they should plump up, but just in case, I squished them down. So I'm gonna throw this in the oven at 350 degrees for 11 to 13 minutes or until they're nice and light and fluffy. Oh my goodness, look at these cookies. These cookies smell so good. My house smells like gingerbread. I am pretty darn excited about these. I'm going to let them cool here on the sheet pan, transfer them into a container for storage. Troy is excited to have a couple of these in his lunch every day, so he'll help me eat these up. But let's go over the points and the calories. So like I mentioned, these cookies are two smart points. This big cookie, I mean, that's a big cookie right there for two smart points on all plans. So it's two points for one cookie or it's five points for two cookies on all plans. So if you wanna have two, unfortunately Weight Watchers math kicks in and makes them five smart points for two. They are 59 calories a piece. Now, if you want bigger cookies, you can make 12. They would be five smart points each or and 118 calories. So you can make bigger cookies, but 
This is a pretty good size for 59 calories and two points. Oh my goodness, I cannot wait to eat these cookies all week. Thank you for joining me on another weekly WW meal prep. I hope you are as excited about these three recipes as I am. They are all absolutely amazing. And my husband even liked the cauliflower casserole. Now he did know there was cauliflower in there, but he still actually liked it, which is amazing. He is not the biggest cauliflower fan, so that's saying a lot for that recipe. All three recipes are on my website site, which is down in the description box, along with the calendar, nutrition coaching, links and discounts to my favorite things, and my Facebook group. Everything is right down below the video. Hit the little arrow and it'll open up the description box. If you enjoyed these recipes, please give this video a big huge thumbs up. And don't forget, if you're new or you're not yet subscribed, of course I'd love to have you. Hit the little subscribe button and don't forget about the bell next to it. That way you're notified whenever I upload. Thank you guys so much for watching. Happy Monday and here is to a fantastic start to a new week. Bye friends.